beautiful little rocky outcrop which is home to approximately 50,000 Cape Gannets, 23 or 4,000 nesting pairs. And what a spectacle this is before us, just these birds and birds and birds on the ground, in the air, and this beautiful sun setting over the Atlantic Ocean. So much sound that it is almost impossible to discern anything specific. And just this massive moving shape and color. It is utterly overwhelming. And that is the feeling that one has when one first sets foot on this place. Pairs together, close relationship, and apparently they mate for life, these birds. Great affection is shown between the male and female, constantly reassuring one another, constantly grooming and taking care of their little space. What a startling creature this is. What a startling place, Malchas Island. you sit with a big herd of, of elephants and you, you just sort of watch them, you find this really interesting symmetry that starts to happen while they feed. And uh, their movements every now and then just sort of mirror each other and you start getting this sort of visual pattern that sort of drifts among the herd as they, as they feed. It's a great example of it today. Just uh, its own sense of rhythm. Just really quite beautiful. We left this herd that were on the edge of the floodplain and went slightly into the dry land and found a bull or two and uh, one or two small family groups. They were digging up roots um, and creating quite a lot of dust. This evening light that we have at the moment is just too too spectacular for words and that I just love catching something um, in that last little bit of light a little bit of orange light and it just, it just seems to turn everything into a little bit of magic This is one of the last remaining water holes in Japan until the rains come again. The animals we see are all very well adapted to dry areas. Neither ostriches nor springbok need to drink regularly. They get most of the moisture they need from the plants that they eat, which is really quite remarkable, seeing as all these plants are so dry. No animal is going to turn down a good supply of water, and they'll come here and drink regularly. 
The ostriches are quite comical when they drink, with their heads going down and then up alternatively. This has a purpose. There's always an eye watching out for potential predators. Every scrap of shade is used. This springbok uses a termite mound to cool itself or to try and hide from, from the heat of the day. The Cory bastard sitting under a tree in the shade, their crops expanding and contracting quickly as they breathe in the hot air, trying to cool themselves down. Ostriches spend a lot of time preening themselves. Their feathers are very important to them. They use them to keep themselves either warm or cool, depending on how hot or cold it is. We're about to come into breeding season with ostriches, and here you can see the male with a group of females showing his breeding colors, the bright red beak and the vivid black and white feathers. As the afternoon wore on, the ostriches moved off into the heat haze, the three males sticking very closely to what must have been the most dominant of females. We decided to head back to the penguin colony and just catch up on them and see how they were doing. It was still fairly early when we got down there and a lot of them were still nesting. Obviously in their pairs, these guys mate for life and they'll stick with the same partner for, for their whole lives. And as things warmed up, they started marching down towards the ocean. And then some were already gathering in their little groups, the diehards that were heading out into this cold, wintry morning to start their day's fishing, where others decided that today was a good day to do a bit of home maintenance. It's just fascinating watching these animals. Every different animal has a different agenda. A lot of these animals have young, so pretty much the pressure's on them to, to head out there and go and look for food for these young ones. <laughs> 